Solemn rendition from the choir of the Fountain of Life Church heralded the final journey of God's general, Pastor Taiwo Dukoya, on Saturday, September 9, 2023. was a moment of sober reflection as friends, families, and church members dressed in green and white converged to bid farewell to this noble man. Activities had began on Friday, September 8, with a service of songs at the church auditorium. The service was characterized with soul-lifting songs, hymns, and testimonies about the life of the deceased. Pastor Taiwo is a good man. 
very good man that never faked. He was never a scam. What you see is what you get. And so we are grateful to God for his life, for the legacy that he has left behind. If you look at the concept of subset in a set, myself, Taiwan, and Kende, we are like the middle children, fourth, fifth, sixth. We are the subset in a set. Now the pain, the pain in the now is, the two in that subset are gone. So it's, it's, a, it's, it's kind of a, a, a lonely place. For four and a half years, we prayed every day for 30 minutes. Every day of the week, except for Friday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. I went on Friday, we break bread, we did the anointing. I went on Sunday, we break bread, we did the anointing, and I look at his eyes on Sunday. He, he looks so calm, just sitting, looking, but not looking at me. It was just just so fresh. Do you know the pastor Taiwo did not experience pain? Let me say it to the world. He did not experience pain. We never have cause to give him tally, no panadol, no. He did not experience pain. And this man spoke in tongues for three months without stopping. It's like... And, and, and if I enter his room, and first maybe you just see his leg before you see his face, the leg... He, you, see, you see, no wonder in Genesis 5, you not serve the Lord faithfully. And he was no more. Because the way he was, he already keyed into God, it was so much that the Lord took him. The Lord just took him. I saw this on Sunday, and I received a call on Monday morning. My phone was not on mute. And I hear, no, 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 Jimmy Oduka, I jumped. To call me at that time means trouble. I said, uncle, uncle, uncle. That the past. So it was a shock to the world. The Lord already prepared me that he's taking his son home. And fondly called him Papa, because that is what he was to us, Papa. The close relationship that some of us had with him in the last two years far outweighed the ones we ever had with him in 50 or 60 something years past. We didn't know that God was preparing us for his home call. If we knew, maybe we would have doubled or even tripled our visit to him to enjoy more of his peaceful nature and learn more from his wealth of experience. We won't trade this moment we shared with him in the last few years for anything in the world. We shall be eternally grateful to God for the opportunity. Pastor Taiwo Daniel Oduka was not only an embodiment of love, peace, and humility, which, of, which was a replica of our earthly father. He also built on the Christian foundation that Baba laid, and he took it to a higher level in the service of God and humanity. He ran his Christian race with passion, total commitment to God, completely sold out for Christ, and full of faith, even in the face of adversities. He never made negative confessions, about his challenges, and whenever we called to find out about his well-being, his responses usually were, Jesu Mashim, Emimi Mon Shishe, Modupe. And he will laugh out loud enough that the person at the other end will hear, hereby calming our fears. We knew he was going through some challenges, but he managed it so well because he did not want to scare us. Always positive in his responses and ever bubbling. No dull moments when with him, he lived a quiet and impactful life. I'm one of the youngest in my class and I'm typically shy. And me and my brother, he's different from me, but we share similar traits. So he taught us in his final years with us to talk more, to make a name for ourselves and not to like rely on your father's work. He said, it's not between 
your father and my father, it's between you and I. And he said that to us all the time. He said that to us all the time. So he was training us into becoming men. And I've become more able to express myself because of him and a better person. So honestly, I would just like to say that because of that final message, he has started my journey into becoming a man, and I would like to become the man he would be. He would like me to be. So, so I just want to say that rest in peace, and we'll become men that you'll be proud of someday. Thank I choose not to mourn the life of my father. No. <laughs> I choose to celebrate his life. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15, O oh death, where is your victory? O oh death, where is your sting? Death is only victorious over those who do not know God. But for us who do, we are victorious over death through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So I am confident of this. At the face of death, my father did not mourn, and he's not mourning now. My dad has made the ultimate transition to glory. I see him praising and worshiping God, and this song keeps coming up in my head as I see him. He's saying, come and join me, sing hallelujah. Jehovah Jireh has done me well. Come and join me, sing hallelujah. Jehovah Jireh has done me well. Till we meet again, Dad. I love you. Fountain, the general has gone home. But we are still here. So that means the work continues. And the last time I checked, a lion cannot give birth to a goat. So for anyone who cares to hear, whether they like it or not, out of our bellies shall flow rivers of living water. And it is the fountain of life. My father's scripture, Isaiah 8, 18. Behold, I and the children the Lord has given unto me are for signs and wonders in Israel. Fountain, my father, was a sign. He was a sign that we could be hard pressed on every side, but never crushed. That we might be perplexed, but never in despair. That we may be, we, we may be struck down, but never destroyed. Listen to me. Whether they like it or not, whether they like it or not. He was a sign that you can love God totally. You can love God unashamedly. You can love God completely with integrity and character. He was a sign. And you know that the word of God does not return to him void. The second part says, and the children that he has given unto me are for signs and wonders. Fountain, we are for wonders. The earth is waiting for the earnest manifestations of the sons and daughters of God. And whether they like it or not, we will arise. With me. I will sing a few of my dad's favorite worship Yoruba songs. Hero didu, lori sera.
House of Prayers later rained on the children. The service got injected with more tuneful renditions from the choir of the church the next day at the funeral service on Saturday. <laughs> In his sermon, Bishop David Abioye extolled the legacies of Pastor Taiwo, stressing the need for individuals to maximize their time on earth and live a life of impact just like the deceased. In Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 2, there is time for everything. A time to be born and a time to die. No one can escape it. Ecclesiastes also chapter 7, verses 1 to 4. You wonder why Solomon said this much. He was in pleasure, affluence, but he realized that one day he had to live. A good name is better than precious ointment, and the day of death is better than the day of one's birth. When one is born, we smile and laugh. When he dies, we cry. Yet the scripture says, the day of death is better than the day of birth. Just like in academic circles, the day of graduation is better than the day of matriculation. Why? Because within the period, so much has been achieved. Came in fresher, now living as graduate. And that's what Pastor Taiwo has experienced. He was matriculated into life. Now he is graduated in glory. Pastor Taiwo finished his work and he left. But the work continues. And the glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former. A powerful thanksgiving was held. The recessional hymn brought the service to a close.
ceremony was graced by top personalities, clergymen, including Mrs. Dolakpo Shimbanju, the wife of ex-Vice President Yemi Shimbanju, the Redeemed Evangelical Mission Trems Bishop Mike Ukonko, the Senior Pastor of Kingsway International Christian Center KICC, Pastor Matthew Ashimolo, also on the Rocks Pastor Paul Adifarasin, Pastor Etua Igudalo, a delegation from the Christian Association of Nigeria can. Daniel Taiwo Udukoya was born on the 15th of June 1956 in Kaduna, Northwest Nigeria. He had his primary and secondary education at Baptist Primary School, Kigo Road, Kaduna, and St. Paul's College, Zaria, before proceeding to the University of Ibadan in 1976, where he obtained a degree in petroleum engineering in 1981. As a petroleum engineer, he started work at the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation NNPC, in April 1982 after the compulsory one-year National Youth Service Corps scheme and served there until his voluntary retirement in January 1994 after his call to the ministry. He founded the Fountain of Life Church alongside his late wife Bimbo Dukoya in 1992. He lost his wife in a Sosoliso plane crash on December 10, 2005. Following the death of his first wife, Taiwo Dukoya got married again to Rosemary Simangele Zulu from South Africa. In November 2021, Udukoya lost his second wife to cancer. Taiwo Udukoya died in the United States on the 7th of August 2023 at the age of 67. He is survived by five children. We say,